Welcome to the channel, people. Today we're creating seven DIYs inspired by Dollar Tree scrap wood pieces. And I've teamed up with my girl, Angela Jones DIY to give you even more ideas. But after paying $1.25 a piece for each tiny piece, I got to thinking, would I get more DIYs if I purchased the same shaped wood at Home Depot? Home Depot, I mean Home Depot. These six foot one by two select pine boards are sanded and ready to go for $5.03. And if I wanted more, I could get the eight foot pieces that are priced at $6.53. However, if you wanna go as cheap as you can get in, I've talked about this before, you get these common boards. They're unfinished, they are not sanded down. You're gonna to need to give them a little bit of love to get to the point of where the other boards are that I'm purchasing for this video. But you do you, it's freezing, it's snowing here. I wasn't standing outside sanding. Now for the other one, because I grabbed two pieces of wood from Dollar Tree, we're gonna use this three quarter popular board and it is four foot long. It's also sanded and ready to go. You can get these as common boards as well. They're a little bit more cheaper. Again, wasn't standing outside standing. I paid $11.43 for everything from Home Depot. And just to give you an idea how much wood I'm getting for that, look at all these DIYs I'm about to get for this video. Let's jump into it. Now here are my Dollar Tree pieces that I'm using to inspire this entire video. So they are not finished. They are common boards. You will have to sand these and it really just depends on what you want to create with them. My Dollar Tree was a little limited on what they had for pieces for their scrap wood section, but don't be afraid to do what I'm doing and rip the pieces apart, measure them out, figure out kind of stuff that you can create with these pieces. Now we're gonna start with a one by two DIY. I forgot to plug it in. <laughs> It's always a good idea to make sure your tools are plugged in when you go to use them. Now, the idea behind this video was to take the size wood from Dollar Tree and be able to use Dollar Tree wood items if that works best for your budget or Home Depot's. For our first DIY, I cut this little piece down to about five or six inches and then painted it white. I'm then taking some laser cutouts from Dollar Tree and we're just gonna figure out which one kind of fits on here. I went with Inspire because it fit on here just perfectly. You will see in the reveal. And then I'm gonna grab a couple of these little paper piece. I can never remember what these are. I should Google it, but I'm going to be lazy. So forgive me. And we're going to clip the back off of these to create some embellishments. You can use a trash bag or a little Ziploc baggie to cut them in or how I just wrap my hand around the whole piece to protect it. Now, before I start attaching, I roughed it up a little bit so the glue will make sure that this sticks on here better. You don't have to do this. I like to do this. I just feel like once I get the glue on there, it just grabs it a little bit better and my pieces tend to stick well. I'm using my favorite Gorilla Glue gel. Yes, I finally have some. <laughs> I've run out of it so quick because I use it so, so much. I also have this link down in my Amazon store and I try to link as many products as I use in my videos on a regular basis down there in case you're interested and want anything that I'm using. You can grab it for yourself and that's going to be it for this one. For our next one, we are creating the cutest little houses using these one by twos. And I'm just creating 45 degree cuts at the top like this. Look how cute they are, they're so adorable. I'm gonna use Waverly's plaster and Waverly's moss color paints to do these. I'm doing one in each color. And then I'm gonna grab one of my favorite little stencils from Dollar Tree. It's like a rubbery piece. I just really like these. It's always worked well for me. And I cut the little stencil into pieces and then had to keep going smaller with the brush because <laughs> it just wasn't, they weren't fitting in the stencil. So I ended up with this teeny tiny little thing to stipple the stencil into place. And look how cute it is. I thought these were very modern boho-ish and just really like the color contrast with both of them. Let me know what you think. So I teamed up today with Angela Jones DIY, who is an amazing creator and also one of my closest friends here on the platform to give you a bunch of inspiration, whether you wanted to use Dollar Tree DIY wood items from their scrap selection, 
or you wanted to go purchase items from Home Depot that were the exact same and save a little bit if you needed to do more DIYs. Because depending on how many DIYs you plan on doing, one might be a little bit more budget friendly than the other. So if you're looking for more inspiration, stop on over and check her out. She has some amazing projects for you. So let's jump into our third DIY. And this is the simplest of the entire video. You're gonna need four beads or pillars or little pegs, whichever you wanna use. Cut your one by two to whatever size you want. Take some Gorilla Glue gel, some hot glue, and wow, you have a cute little stand. It's so cute. Look at it. It just houses all your cute little tiny pieces. Our next project is my largest in the video. We're creating a window. When I initially seen them stakes at Dollar Tree, this is where my mind went. Now, you might not be able to get the exact measurements because the longer pieces are a little bit larger than the ones at Dollar Tree, but they have a ton of scrap wood there. So just surf for your pieces. Now, I recently got this for Christmas. This is my first time using it. I see other creators using it and things were flying everywhere. <laughs> just this was an experience cutting these popsicle sticks uh my verdict wasn't out at this point on it yet so i'm like i did link it below my amazon store because i was super excited to get it for christmas and try it out and initially i was like Meh. but we'll get to more of that later now for these pieces i'm using some wood glue and then i'm gonna take the little bits of popsicle sticks and attach them if you're building something like this for yourself, you create the back however you want. I resell a lot of my pieces on my website, so I wanna make sure they are as neat and tidy as possible. And I'm keeping this down to a minimum. I didn't wanna use a staple gun here because I was worried it would go through the pieces because it's only three quarter inch thick and, you know, kept it real nice. I let this dry overnight because I wanted to make sure it would be nice and sturdy for our next step which didn't go at all the way I planned. So I had this little square piece that came in a multi-pack from Walmart. And I'm like, this is gonna look awesome. It's gonna make our window. And I'm just kind of measuring it around here and brought the gator shears back in to do its job. And this is where I fell in love with the gator shears, okay? They cut through this so magnificently and it was simple. It was a clean cut and I'm like, this might be a little bit rough on my carpal tunnel, but look at how beautiful it sliced it and it was easy. Popsicle stick bad, Dow's good, winning. Now this gel says it cures in like 10 seconds. I like to think 30 seconds to a minute. However, it's still magnificent. It's got my full support. I love this glue. Doing a project like this <laughs> is very questionable and you need to be mindful with your placement because you're gonna end up gluing your fingers together like I did. <laughs> I tried being very precise in the placement of these two little joints right here. I sized them up, I cut them up, I then made sure to put them in the right little spot. And as usual, my math is off just a little bit. <laughs> so I'm snipping little tiny pieces off, you know, just to kind of get it to fit in there because I don't want to push the piece I already got glued in there out and I wanna make sure that they all fit. So see this tiny little piece I'm cutting off right here? I decided in a world of worlds where glue doesn't stick to you that it was a good idea to attach that to the piece that was too short, which is on the right hand side. So here we go. <laughs> oh, it, it, I didn't show it all on camera because see how it started sticking to my finger? I, at that point, the damage was done. There was glue on my finger. And as I'm trying to attach this piece, it kept coming undone and sticking to my finger. So then I had my thumb, my pointer finger, finger <laughs> stuck to that little tiny piece. And for the rest of the day, my pointer finger felt like a potato chip. <laughs> how to describe it it was crusty but yeah so be mindful see that little bit oh what a nightmare and here's me trying to show you my potato chip skin look at that <laughs> Anyhow, let's move on. I wanted to give this a neutral color without keeping it exactly the color that it was. So I mixed a little bit of water and antique Waverly wax together. I experiment a lot with stain art and to me, this gives a very light coffee stain appearance, a faux coffee stain look. Here is the back of the project and the front of the project after it was dry. Let me know what you guys think of this one.
for this project, I wanted to create like a three piece little item, something you can kind of shove on a shelf, on a windowsill. Really, you could do that with a lot of these. Did I mention I like small DIYs? <laughs> so I cut little square-ish pieces and I did three of them. They weren't perfect in measure. I wanted you to see like, it doesn't matter if they're imperfect. You don't have to have a perfect cut. You paint them suckers, whatever color you want, let them dry. And you can add whatever you want to these. I decided to go through and make myself miserable finding a teeny tiny stencil <laughs> that would fit just perfectly on here along with a laser cutout. It took me like 45 minutes to piece this little gem together. I know it doesn't look like much and it's really not, but I absolutely love how this turned out. Let me know what you think of this one. The initial inspiration came from just needing a reminder system. I measured this to size to make sure it was just about what the measurement was for the original Dollar Tree item and then took a tumbling block and glued that to the back of this. Once that was completely dry, I then took some antique Waverly wax and painted the entire piece and let that dry. And then I'm coming in with some metal that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. You could use some burlap fabric from this. I just had some leftover galvanized, you know, shaped metal and I love this kind of stuff. So I thought this would be really cute. I threw my Gorilla Glue gel on there, let this dry, then I grabbed a little chalkboard that I had purchased from Walmart some time ago put some glue on here and let this dry it's such a small piece that you could really fit it anywhere you can fit it next to your kids nightstand in the morning just to let them know that they're special to you remind yourself of the date if you don't have anything quick or your favorite little spiritual And last but not least, I wanted to use both pieces of wood in one decor piece. So I cut them down and then I stained just the back of them antique Waverly wax. I did leave the spot bare on the little square piece where I'm going to be applying wood glue so we can attach them shortly. But first we're going to do a coat of Waverly's plaster. You can use whatever color you want. We're gonna decoupage on this and I'm using a light colored napkin. So depending on how dark your napkin is that you decide to decoupage with, it will show through. So I'm using white. A little tip, put some Mod Podge on the tippy points of your finger and smoosh them together and it will get all the sneaky little layers of your napkin off. So you can just use the top layer of the napkin. Because I wasn't ripping this apart, I was literally placing the napkin over the entire piece I took Mod Podge did the entire piece it was very small so I didn't feel I needed to do this in sections larger piece I do moderate tiny amounts of Mod Podge with a napkin and then apply the napkin for this I just did the whole entire thing and then took my sponge and pressed it completely down and as you can see here it's already stuck on there it's not coming off I then cut the next section down leaving some of the branch with the flowers out because we're going to give this a little bit of a 3d effect and put some wood flowers down here at the very end and again less is more with your Mod Podge when you're using a napkin it's very easy to rip so the more Mod Podge you use the more it will slide the more it will tear and then I just take a 400 grit sandpaper and go around the edges and it just peels right off. Once I was happy with that, I glued down using hot glue and wood glue our little square on top of our corner here and then attached our little wood flowers in two different spots. If your flower's big, just peel it down. It's not a big deal. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you got some learning and some entertainment. Let me know in the comments below if you have a favorite. And Angela, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Until next time, people. Bye.